The doctor wants me on 800 calories, and I have no idea what that would be in actual food. I want to eat burger, big and juicy. Oh, Eustace, you are so relatable. <laughs> Wait, what are you guys doing here? This is my off week. No, Minnie Michelle, it's my off week. But, but what about spa week? Why would a doll need a spa week? Remember, I'm getting a chemical pill, so I don't want to shed all over our wonderful audience. So you're going to film the whole week. Do, do I get paid extra? You don't get paid, sweetie. Ah! Michelle, don't throw things. We all know that you can't afford to replace it. I'll go get ready. Hello and welcome back to my miniverse. I guess I'll be here all week. This is my kitchen and a place where many people make decisions that cause them to be overweight. Or in today's case, extremely morbidly obese. My 600 pound life is a show that showcases morbidly obese individuals that have extreme food addiction that has brought them to be around 600 pounds or more. They can barely walk, roll, all they can do is eat and well, wait to die. It's extremely sad to watch and today's episode is nothing less than that. In fact, it's more than usual. Sean set records in the My 600 Pound Life series for being the biggest person on the show. So big that he was too big for their scale. A scale that is used to handling oversized individuals? Extremely sad, right? Whenever we talk about My 600 Pound Life, I like my audience to keep in mind that there is a movement that doesn't move, sorry, I had to say it. There is a movement that fights for fat acceptance. There are people who want others to say this is totally normal. Hashtag health at every size. What I ate today is a fat. For breakfast, I had a double cheeseburger. With that being in your head, let's dig into the very tragic life of Sean Milken. Sean Milken is a 26 year old man who lived with his mother and went on My 600 Pound Life to hopefully find a solution for his extreme eating habits. His life was pretty sedentary as he laid in bed mostly all day and when he did get up it had to be a huge necessity like to go to the bathroom. So when the need to go to the bathroom would arise he would need two people. Two. Count him too. to help him do so. He got to his size because he didn't have the best relationship with his father. Whenever his father would mistreat him, he would turn to food and unfortunately the mother had a role in his food intake as well. Every day his mom would bring him fast food and other treats after she came home from work. And as you can see, well, the mother struggles with her weight as well. This is probably the worst thing to happen to a man on the brink of literal death who's addicted to food. Having an enabler who is also obese herself and also addicted to food. Get it? Right? Two addicted people just in the same house, eating the same things, doing the same things, and definitely not holding each other accountable. I'm pretty sure that is just the recipe for destruction. And destruction is literally what happened. The excuse Sean's mother would give us as to why she keeps bringing him treats, even though he literally got to the point that he couldn't move, would be that she felt bad for him that he couldn't move. And food was the only thing that would bring him joy. Well, eventually the two would seek help and go to no other than Dr. Now. Let's bring him in. But Sean has some mobility, which is good. You okay? But he can't walk too far, and he still needs to be in a wheelchair. That's right, y'all. This is what your foot does when you eat too much. I really, really want someone to hashtag health at every size right here. Let's see Mr. Sean dance around on TikTok like all the fat acceptance people do. Oh wait, he can't, cause he's got the draggy foot. He just drags that sucker along because of all of his immense pain. Actually, it hurts for him to even be in the wheelchair. Please stop, I can't go any further. Stop. Ah. The pain is so bad for Sean that they have to stop and send Dr. Now out and see if everything is okay. And well, it's not. Thank you. Sean, you feeling okay? No, I'm an extreme pain. So I wasn't sure what Dr. Now was going to do. I know he helps people lose weight and does all the surgeries and stuff, but I don't think he can move the weight. This man is so old and so tired of all these people's excuses. He was not about to move this man who couldn't even handle a wheelchair. Everything I don't use to say is wheelchair. A wheelchair is one of the last options to get these people from point A 
to point B. The last option to get these people to where they need to go when they cannot walk. And he's saying that he can't even do that. So yes, people keep playing that relaxing and happy music, dancing around and saying, there's no such thing as bad food. And of course my favorite, hashtag health at every size. Oh, and my other favorite, fat phobia kill. Let me tell you something. This man's whole body is fat phobic. It's rejecting the fat, but he just keeps on eating. I mean, look at his face. This man is in pain from being wheeled around. That cannot be good or fun. This man is not having a good time. I'm sure he's not about to hashtag health at every size and he better not claim atypical like some people. She's got all this candy around her large ass. Okay, you know what? We aren't gonna have that talk right now. We are focused on someone who is at least kind of trying more than her. Well, I mean, you'll see the outcome when we get there. Unless I put it in the thumbnail, I'm not too sure what we'll do with this. Back to the story. So Sean tells Dr. Now he's not used to moving so much. So Dr. Now had to check his heart rate to make sure he wasn't about to die right then and there. I've had to do more than the last 20 15 minutes I've had to in a while. But according to Dr. Now, this man is perfectly fine. His heart is fine for what it is, and he needs to stop being a big old baby. Sean is throwing a little tantrum because he's uncomfortable in his wheelchair. He's likely used to getting his way with that. And he is. Pretty much whatever Sean wants, Sean gets. He wants to lay down all day. The mom says, sure. Sean wants 58 burgers from Burger King. Mom says, I'll get it right now, darling. Y'all, Sean needs help wiping his own ass hole right in the center of those cheeks. Someone else has to take some tissue paper, put their hand in between his butt and wipe it for him. And that someone is usually the mom. That's usually what you do when your children are small, cute and adorable and don't stink as much. Not when they're a 20 something year old man. But the mother seems to have a lot of guilt, not because she's feeding him all this food, no, 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 because the way the father treated her son, but that guilt and wanting to give him everything literally is destroying him and made him become this sad man who can't even handle a wheelchair and the sliding foot guy he is today. And the unfortunate thing is, is that they both are very, very delusional when it comes to the food intake. And the mom goes on and says that she's been having him eat a around 2,500 calories a day. The last calories that I was trying to get him at was approximately 2,500 a day. We were 2,500 a day. Now, just to give you some perspective, if you aren't educated on calories, my boyfriend eats about 3,000 calories a day. I know damn well that this man right here is not eating less than my boyfriend, which shows that this woman either doesn't know how to do math and use food scales, or she has never looked at the back of a nutrition label in her life. Because Miss Mommy over here gets this man's food with her own mommy hand. And if she would just look at the label or maybe use this new thing called Google, she would know that he's probably eating about six times as much as she thinks. Yeah, and the reality is Sean must be taking in at least 20 to 30,000 calories a day. See, now that makes a lot lot more sense. Dr. Now even brings up that their relationship is very toxic and she needs to take this even more seriously than him. You're killing him right now. This has to stop. This is a very unhealthy dynamic between them. See now this bothers me. This face of her looking down as if she never knew what she was doing and we need to pity her. I might be saying something controversial here, but I have no soft spot for parents who do this to their kids. Just like I don't have a soft spot for the other extreme of that parents who starve their kids so they can be aesthetically pleasing to them. And I know some of you right now are throwing excuses her way, trying to justify what she's doing, this whole situation, just because they're not skinny and they're obese. Some if you always do that and it's weird. Just ask yourself right now, if this was the opposite, would you be giving excuses? No! Oh, what? Well, mom, time to clean up your son's ass again, since you feel so sorry for him. And well, she does do it. She hobbles on over to him with a plastic bag and other tools to clean his butt because this seems to be a normal thing that he does, having accidents at 26 years old because he can't really move and get to the bathroom like the other 26 year olds 
can. As long as she does everything for him, Sean has no reason to leave. Also, did you notice that that room cleared the F up very quickly when he shit himself? Not even the employees wanted to clean up that butt. Anyway, after the mom cleans up Sean, it's time to finally get his weight and see what his starting point is. All right, the scale said over the limit, so this scale goes only to 800 pounds. Yes, a scale that is made to handle an excessively obese individual can't even handle this man's body. That is how large he is. So eventually they have to roll him into another room. By the way, he is naked because of the accident earlier and he probably feels very defeated and humiliated. Hashtag health at every size, am I right? Anyone? No? Yeah, that's what I thought. So they take him to a bed scale where he has to struggle once again to lift up his body while Doctor now looks like this and he sits there naked. And then we finally see that he sets a my 600 pound record. Looks like you're 919 pounds. You may be the heaviest person alive right now. You know what? If he, or should I say his mom, just pushed a little bit more and brought him just a tad bit more food, he could have had his own show called 1,000 Pound Guy. It could have replaced 1,000 Pound Sister since Tammy actually lost so much weight. So Doctor now says he's surprised that this man is not dead and thinks the only reason that he's not dead is because he still has just a little bit of mobility left. The fact that he's still somewhat mobile is probably the only reason he's still alive. So Doctor now gives him a plan and he wants him to only eat 800 calories a day and lose 100 pounds in the next few months. If you do that, I will prove you for weight loss surgery. Welp, you can probably guess what happened. Yes, they are struggling with the new plan and by that I mean Sean and his mom are struggling with this. May I have something to eat? Yeah, I'll get you something in a second. My mom and I have been in Houston for a month now, and we're still trying to just get settled. So whenever Sean asks for food, the mom does her normal routine of getting him the food because she doesn't want to see her little boy struggle. I guess not being able to walk and shitting yourself in front of an elderly man and his employees are not on the grounds of struggling and she sees it as thriving, so you know, okay. And yes, you did see that right. The mother is in a wheelchair. She is becoming more immobile herself every day. So that's wonderful. Hashtag health at every size. Let's dance around, huh? Sean hasn't really adapted to the new diet just yet. But we're trying. Unfortunately, trying is not doing, and this is a very serious situation. He is on the verge of dying, like literally any minute now, and she just wants to slowly adjust. You have no time, woman. Sean has the big appetite. You know, he just wants to eat constantly. He never seems like he's gonna get full. And if he's hungry, he needs something to eat. Actually, he really doesn't. I know this might be extreme. Some of you might not agree with this, but if you just left this man in this room with no food, made sure that he had enough fluids and he was drinking water, at his size, he would be perfectly fine. Someone his size does not need food. That's the reason why Doctor Now gives these people such little calories because the food is what's killing him. And when the mom gives him food or when a lot of these people get food, they don't understand portion size. The doctor wants me on 800 calories. And I have no idea what that would be in actual food. Well, it's about that small portion of fries that you're eating right now. And probably that burger that you're sucking down too. So now you're just doubling the amount of calories. But that doesn't matter. There's a movement that says that there's no such thing as bad food and eating too much doesn't exist. Hashtag health at every size. Something else that bothers me to the core of my plastic body is the fact that many of these people just play dumb. We are in modern times. We have something called Google. No one should be confused on calories, especially if you're about to die and you spend all your time on the phone, computer, or in front of a TV and you don't work. Like I'm sure many of you guys are probably thinking that I'm being harsh in this video, but it's very hard to feel sorry for people who are playing dumb, making excuses, and don't do what the doctor tells them to do because they think they know best. Sean and I did try to keep to the doctor's diet but we didn't feel comfortable putting him on that low of a calorie diet. Well, they didn't know best and their method didn't work because remember when the wheelchair hurt, Sean? Well, now we can't handle a full on stretcher with padding. Sean, how you feel? Extreme pain. Where's your pain? The tailbone and my back. And how is your degree of uh, ability to move around? 
It's worse. Yes, he's worse. How is the nutrition? Good, good. Liar! See, this is why I can't feel sorry for these types of people, especially the mother. She wants to just stay in the Lulu land. Like the other mom we talked about whose daughter was too big to get out the house after she died and the mom seemed like she was blaming everyone else for the daughter's death except for herself. I mean, he's eating, you know, just good healthy food, but we need to get on 800 calories. Renee, his condition is far worse than two months ago. This is not acceptable. I thought the doctor now was just going to give him the surgery because it's such an extreme situation, but he didn't. He pretty much said, this man gonna die. I mean, what should he be eating? Should he be eating protein? I gave you all the information you needed in the diet plan. John is near death right now. If I send Sean home, this will probably be the last time I see him. You and your mom has not made a single positive change as far as I can tell. And unfortunately, Sean would pass away from a heart attack because he was so addicted to food and his mother would enable his addiction. Many people say that this is one of the most tragic stories. And this story is something that I wish people in the fat acceptance community would watch. Food addiction is in no way fun, good, easy. And I personally think fat acceptance is similar to the mom in this story. Fun fact, the H in H-A-E-S actually stands for health. I know it can be very confusing. It's the wild notion that you can pursue health promoting behaviors without being a certain size or needing to achieve a certain size. Fat acceptance influencers are nothing more than enablers who are addicted to food themselves but don't want to admit it and would rather make their life seem special while taking others down the same path with them. You know, the path of death. Because once again, this man died. I'm going to admit him to the hospital and start him on 800 calorie diet per day for next couple months. If we don't, his body is going to give out any day now. Could you imagine if there was other movements that enabled people who have a very serious addiction? It is crazy to me and people actually follow it. Anyway, that was the tragic story of Sean who died an avoidable, slow, painful death, but before he died, he was humiliated on national television. What a life. Hopefully more people see these types of videos and run, walk, or roll away from the fat acceptance movement when they log on a TikTok and see all of the fat girl joy. I don't need that Olympic. Let me tell you, if you're struggling with food addiction and have an enabler, this is your sign to literally run, walk, or roll away from them and seek help. Please. I do not like these morbid stories. I'd rather stick with the fun ones, but they are part of our little brand here and they're important to talk about. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me in my miniverse kitchen. I will see all of you in the next video and don't forget to check out the Mean Girls of Fat Acceptance Part 1 linked below and to follow my new Instagram where you can see all of my miniverse antics. And I will see you guys next time. See ya. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I guess, you know, I'm here all week. I had maybe a gallon of ketchup. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on.